Okay, so we know how to load some fonts. Um, let's see some other ways that we can display text other than just in a straight line. Um, I've gone ahead here and just kind of set up a template for myself. Um, I've got a font variable here. We're just gonna use one font for this. Um, and I've loaded that from my assets folder um, and using a different font for this, which should be kind of nice. Um, okay, so if we want to draw um, text in a straight line, that's pretty easy. Let's say we want to draw text around a circle on the screen. Uh, we can definitely do that. More complex shapes like polygons or on curves is going to be really hard and out of the scope of what we can do here. If you want to dig into that as a project, I think that's awesome. Please let me know if you have good success. Um, and I'm sure there's some examples out there you could find. Circles is pretty easy. So let's start just by drawing a circle on screen. I think that's helpful for us to kind of visualize this here. Um, and I think the first thing I need for this is a radius so I can control that. I'm gonna make that a variable up here. And you know, as we're progressing, we really wanna think about the platform where our work gets seen. In this case, it's in the browser where the window is gonna change size depending on the person who's using it. Um, so making the radius a fixed size is probably not a good idea. We want it to be relative to the size of the screen. Um, so I'm going to um, set radius in the, oops, not in preload. I want to do this in the setup. And let's do that. Now, because I don't know if it's this, the browser is going to be wider or taller, um, I'm going to use the min function, which gives me the smallest of two values um, between the width and the height. And then I'm going to divide that by three. So my radius now is going to be whichever is smaller, the width or the height, divided by three. And now when I draw this circle, we can say no fill. Let's do kind of a blue. And I'm going to do it in the center of the screen. And then radius times two. And now I can see I have this circle. And this circle is going to um, change size depending on how my window is, and it's never going to get cut off. It's always going to be the same proportion to the window, which is great. Okay, so now I can see my circle, and this will just help us kind of visualize what we need to do. Um, to draw our text around the circle then, really what we're going to just need to do is translate to the center, um, rotate at a des the desired angle, and that'll continue around the circle. Then we want to translate up to the edge of the circle and draw our text there. Then we'll go back to the middle, rotate again, and keep going. So it's one of those things that's easy to say. Let's um, see how easy it is to do in code. So for next, I'm going to make a variable for my text. I'm going to call it string. I have no idea where this came from, but <laughs> this is what occurred to me when I was writing the demo. You could replace this with any text you want. Um, and then I think we're going to want to try to draw our text. So we can make this work better in a little bit. But for now, um, we then want to calculate the, um, if we want our text to go all the way around, we want to be able to calculate then the angle between each letter so that it divides evenly around the circle. So I'm going to create a variable here, angle between letters. And um, for now, let's think about this being a full circle. So a full circle is two pi, or 360 degrees, divided by the length of our string. So we'll do str. Now we can just do dot length, and it's going to give us the number of characters in that text. Um, we could do console.log, angle between letters. And it's a little small down there, but we can see it. it actually, it's in radians, which doesn't mean much to me. So we can do degrees. And we see it's about 11 degrees, which is, which is perfect. OK, then we can use a for loop to walk through our text. So we want to say push, translate to the center of our circle, which in this case is width divided by 2, height divided by 2. Uh, then we're going to do a for loop. i equals 0, i is less than str.length. That's, again, the number of characters in our string. And then um, I always like to do the pop right away so I don't forget to have both of them and where they go. Then inside the for loop, we're going to want to do a couple of things. We're going to want to do push again. You can do it multiple times because I want to be able to rotate temporarily, move out to the spot, and then pop back, and then continue my way around. So I'm going to say rotate. Um, 
I times angle between letters. So that's going to give me my rotation every time around. Then I want to translate. Um, and in this case, I'm going to go zero in the x direction and negative radius in the y direction because I want to go up. I want to start at the top. And we'll see in a minute how we can adjust that angle or the starting position. And then I'm going to write my text. So fill 255, stroke, text. Now, um, we haven't talked a lot about strings here, but you can also access characters in the same way you would an array or a list. So I can do the index of I, and that's going to give me the letter. And that's going to be at 0, 0, because 0, 0 now is a position on the edge of my circle. And then we don't want to forget pop down here, because that matches this one. And let's run it and see if it's doing what we want it to do. Looks pretty good. Oh, I forgot to change my font. Um, let's do that up in the setup here. So I could say text font, font, text. Um, let's also do uh, text align, center, and baseline. That'll give us a little bit better look, I think. And um, let's change our text size too. And again, I'm going to make this dynamic. So I'm going to say radius divided by four. And we could try changing all of these things and see how they work. Um, so the size looks pretty good. You can see it's now got my nice italic font, which is cool. And the spacing looks pretty good with one exception. And that's that we have them, our text is bumping the beginning and the end are right next to each other. And that's because there's no um, spacing. They're just evenly kind of arrayed around. So one way to do this, it's a bit of a hack. It's just to add a space at the end of our string. And now we get I think what looks much better. Um, you could think about other ways of changing this. Maybe you want to have like um, a bullet character showing the beginning and the end, something like that. You could also write a function that would detect if there's a space at the end and add one if there's not. You know, there's lots of things that you could do that would be pretty fun. Um, cool. So I think this looks pretty good. Let's add one more feature here. Um, and that is, I want to be able to decide where my text starts on the circle and how much of the circle it takes up. Maybe I want it to go all the way around, or maybe I want it just to go a quarter or a halfway. So I'm going to make two more variables up here, one called start angle. I'm going to make that zero. And then I'm going to also make one called distance angle. Um, and I'm going to make this in degrees because it's a little easier for my brain to think that way. Um, and this is... Now, it's weird to think about distance as an angle, but if we think about going around the circle, it doesn't make sense to think about distance as pixels because that's the circumference. Instead, I want to think about slices of pi. So um, no pun intended, right? You imagine the circle is a pi um, or a piece of pizza, right? So you're slicing it. And so maybe we want to go 90 degrees, and that's that kind of section, or we want to go 45 degrees, and it's a section like that. Um, Cool, then I can go down into my drawdown here and my distance between letters then isn't going to be um, two pi here. It's gonna be our distance angle. But distance angle is in degrees, so we need to convert this to radians. And now we've got the spacing properly set. So if I change this, for example, to be 180, now when I run this, my text just goes 180 degrees. But it's still starting up at the top. So there's one more thing that we want to do. And that is after our initial translate, which moves us to the center of our circle, I want to start my rotation, offset it by the amount that we specified as our start angle. So we're going to say rotate. And again, we need to go radians, start angle, like that. And now, well, I think it's zero now. So if we change the start angle to 90 and the distance angle is 180, now it should be on the bottom. We could still make this 360. Uh, no, that's not doing quite what I wanted. Okay, so maybe, maybe that's a place where this could be improved. Oh, of course, it's still going all around. No, this is doing what we want. Um, the text is starting here and it's going all the way around if we wanted it to start on the bottom and go all the way around, we could do that. We could make this super tight. Our window spacing, or letter spacing gets really, really tight here. Um, or we could do you know, some other variation here like that. 
So I'm going to add one more thing here, um, which is, is, I think, kind of a good thing to start getting in a habit of doing. Um, and that's to have your project reset when the window gets resized. So if we add this function window resized, this is built into um, P5.js. And uh, it's kind of like mouse pressed. It gets called whenever the, that event happens. And there's different things you could do. You could resize your canvas. Um, instead, what I like to call is setup. And the reason is that I'm setting variables based on the canvas size. So I don't just want to resize my canvas. I want to also um, affect all these other things that need to get changed. So now if I run this um, and it refreshes, if I make my window bigger, you'll see at a certain point, the circle gets no bigger because my um, height is now smaller than my width. And then as I shrink this in, it's just automatically re-rendering as I go. And this kind of responsive design takes some um, getting used to for sure, um, but is really powerful and it's gonna allow your sketches to look really awesome at all sizes. Um, so we're gonna keep plowing ahead with some more examples, do some other cool stuff with text, but hopefully this also gives you some other ideas of how you could think about placement and stuff like that.